Yes. So welcome back everyone to another session for our statistics and probability. Our next lesson for today, under lesson 3, still under chapter 1, exploring data, is levels of measurement. Our objective is to identify the levels of measurement given a statement and the methods of data collection. Appreciate the importance of identifying the levels of measurement and the methods of data collection and participate in a mini, well, informal debate. So I'm going to ask you a question. Do you believe this statement? Students who eat a healthy breakfast will do best on a quiz, while students who eat an unhealthy breakfast will get an average performance, and students who do not eat anything at all for breakfast will do the worst on a quiz. Now, do you believe that statement? So it's either you agree or disagree with that statement. If you agree, a point of consideration may be to say that breakfast is used as better fuel for cognitive functions in the brain. If you disagree, a point can be to say that there is no direct relationship between breakfast and improved cognitive function. So why don't you write down your points of why you agree or disagree with that statement? Say that we had decided to apply statistics in the given statement above to see which side of the argument is statistically correct. If we are to answer this question, it should be considered first if it is answerable to a statistical process. Based on the statement above, what should what can be or should be our question that is answerable to a statistical process? A question can be, does breakfast improve cognitive function? Or is there a direct relationship between breakfast and improved cognitive function? We are now going to apply the four-step statistical process, collecting, processing, summarizing, and analyzing data. For the first one, collecting. Let's first identify what's our universe. Let's say that our universe is the students in Kevin City Science High School. Well, our sample is the grade 11 students in said school, Kevin City Science High School. I said before in our lesson in basic terms in statistics that population is a set of all possible values of a variable. So the variable we have is the type of breakfast the students eat. So our population can be healthy, unhealthy, or nothing at all. Considering the first variable, a question for the survey may be, do you usually have breakfast before going to school or before opening your laptop and doing online classes or doing your modules? The possible answers for this question are yes or no. The responses could lead us to identify whether the respondent had a healthy breakfast, unhealthy breakfast, or nothing at all. However, there is another thing to consider, the second variable, the performance of the grade 11 students in their quiz. As we describe the data collection process to verify the validity, there is also a need to identify how are we to gather data from the sample. So our data gathering methods, we have three. We have objective, subjective, and the use of existing records. If we're going to use objective, this method uses any or of the combination of the five senses by using observation. For subjective, this method uses a questionnaire or an interview to gather the needed data. And then you have the last one, which is the use of existing records. From the name itself, this method uses existing records from a past research or from gathered data before or from government websites. So the data gathered from the objective and subjective method is referred to as primary data, while the data gathered from the use of existing records is referred to as secondary data. We are to be careful of in using secondary data or the use of existing records, especially when it comes to the validity or uh, the bias that is concerned with the data that we're going to collect. For processing, we are going to consider to verify the, valid the validity, it's the four levels of measurement, nominal, ordinal, interval, and ratio. For nominal, we have variables that are categorical and non-numeric or where the numbers have no sense of ordering. An example can be numbers on the uniforms of basketball players or volleyball players, sex, marital status, religious affiliation. For our study regarding on the validity of the statement regarding the effect of breakfast on school performance, students can be coded. Students who responded yes 
to question 1 of whether they had breakfast can be coded as 1. While those who responded no or having no breakfast can be assigned a code 0. Now, code 1 and 0 are just numerical codes. These numbers are simply used for numerical coding and cannot be used for ordering or any mathematical operation. Next, level of measurement we have ordinal. From the word ordinal, we're going to tackle on order. Ordinal level of measurement are categorical variables like the nominal. However, the ordering is important. That is, the values of the variable could be ranked. For example, social economic status, A to E, where A is the upper class and E is the lower class. Difficulty of questions, easy, medium, difficult. You can also have rank in a contest, first place, second place, third place. And perception is in Likert scales. From a scale of 1 to 10, how happy are you? 10 being the happiest. The third level of measurement we have is the interval. Interval level of measurement tells us that one unit differs by a certain amount of degree from another unit. Examples is Celsius and Fahrenheit and the IQ of a person. Ang daming ingay! Hindi ko na kaya! Si Gran Mario, asa dito? Yung asa doon? Paano? Oh, Diyos ko! <laughs> When measuring temperature in Celsius, a 10 degree difference has the same meaning anywhere along the scale. The difference between 10 and 20 degrees Celsius is the same as the difference between 80 and 90 degrees Celsius. However, we cannot say that 80 degrees Celsius is twice as hot as 40 degrees Celsius. This is because there is no true zero, but only an arbitrary zero point. A measurement of zero degrees in Celsius does not reflect a true lack of temperature. Now, that's the meaning of arbitrary. Hindi porkit zero na siya, ibig sabihin wala nang temperature around you. Other example of a variable measured in the interval is the intelligence quotient or IQ of a person. We can tell not only which person ranks higher in IQ, but also how much higher he or she ranks with one another. But zero IQ does not mean no intelligence at all. The students, in, the students can also be classified or categorized according to, to their IQ level. Hence, we can say that IQ is measured in the interval level while having the properties of those measured in the ordinal level as well as those in the nominal level. Since they can be ranked according to their IQs and they can be classified according to their IQs. Now, racial level of measurement possesses a meaningful, unique, and non-arbitrary absolute fixed zero point and allows all arithmetic operations. An example can be mass, heights, weights. With mass as an example, the difference between 120 grams and 135 grams is 15 grams. And this is the same difference between 380 grams and 395 grams. The level at any given point is constant and a measurement of zero reflects a complete lack of mass. Amount of money is also at the ratio level since money has a true zero point. If you have zero money, this implies the absence of money. Nominal has no order, no distance, and no origin with no specific characteristics under zero. For ordinal, we have order, but no distance and no origin, no specific characteristics for zero again. For interval, you don't have an origin, only an arbitrary zero, and zero is not a true fixed point. So this means that zero has no meaning, yet zero still exists. However, for ratio, you have order, distance, and origin. Your zero here now is absolute. This means that zero has meaning. Zero denotes absence. Okay? However, the levels of measurement, these four, depend mainly on the method of measurement, not on the property measured. For example, the weights of a primary school student measured in kg has a ratio level. We know that weight is under ratio. But the students can be categorized into over, overweight, normal, and underweight. In this case, the weight is measured in an ordinal level. So it still depends on the data you have collected, on what level of measurement it falls under. You have collecting and processing. We only tackled the two first steps of the statistical process, which is collecting and processing. Collecting, you have to consider the set of all students in the class as our universe. And then you have processing to verify the quality and integrity of the data after they were collected. 
we have there the four levels of measurement, nominal, ordinal, interval, and ratio. And that's it for lesson three. Um, that's still under chapter one, exploring data. And don't forget to post your app. Temperature in Celsius.